We are summer people. We're not full time. We've always been summer people. And I don't remember a single summer not being in Saluda, North Carolina. We, our family lives in uh, Tennessee. I grew up in Kingsport. I went to college in Greenville and settled down uh, south of Knoxville. So I just went down the interstate. I wished I'd gone the other way, but <laughs> it's kind of unusual way. Our family got to salute it with my grandfather that worked for the British Railroad in uh, Havana, Cuba. He designed almost every railroad bridge on the whole island of Cuba. My dad and the railroad liked Batista. Oh, they transported his troops, the rural guards, all over the island, and he paid his bills on time always. But the wealthy families of Cuba took every penny of their money and sent it to Switzerland, France, Germany. None of it stayed in Cuba. My dad got asthma and he had to come out of the tropics. The doctors down there said, you, well, you got to get out of the tropics. Our family is originally from Augusta, Georgia. There's a Twiggs uh, family. There was a, in fact, Robert E. Lee's first commanding general was my namesake, General David E. Twiggs. And uh, that was in the Mexican-American War. He went to Clemson and uh, got a job with the British Railroad. He was a railroad engineer. Because of that, uh, and my family coming up here, we brought, my dad talks about it, but he doesn't give the names of the two other families that came up with us. Uh, one was the Watermans, who later married the Bames. Many of you probably know the Bames. Uh, Mary Waterman was a childhood friend of my dad's, and they came up, and then she married a Bame, and that's how they got involved. The other family was the Ogdens that owned Ogden Mountain. Uh, they came up, uh, Anita's here, <laughs> and their family came up, and they were all were railroad people, all worked for the railroad, and, the, and my dad, my grandfather chose this place because it's the steepest railroad. That's why, you know, he, he chose that because of that reason, you know. It, I know that there are some histories on the history tape that a lot of people came up for other reasons, for health reasons too, but my grandfather chose Saluda because of the railroad grade, which was kind of neat. These replicas, my grandfather built these replicas. Like I told you he was an engineer, so he was good at it. This is where we are right now, a replica of the a train station. Uh, my grandfather actually died before I was even born, so I never met the man. He died in Havana. He, he knew things were changing. The family was Baptist, became Episcopalian because of the British inf influence down there, and he went to an Episcopal private school down there, and he'd walk to school and come back, and he saw the barrios. He could tell that when you had so much opulence, right beside so much poverty, there was no way that could stand. And that's the thing that's a danger of if you ever lose your middle class, things like that happen because people just, they, it just can't stand that way. And that's what happened. And one of the neat things I always remember about Saluda was that, and I think we've lost this, and, and forgive me for this editorial, but you invited me and I'm a lifelong Democrat, so I'm going <laughs> to give you a little, but, my, my, but, the, but the other families weren't. And the Bames and my parents would sit on a dinner table and argue the toss about all kinds of things. That doesn't happen. We are in our camps now. And that's one thing I remembered about Saluda, that people of very different ideas and different cultures and things would come, be able to come together and share your stories peacefully. And we have to get back to that as a country. We've got to get away from being in our camps and get together and talk about things with our neighbors. Don't leave politics out of it. I know I'm 60, but I still remember I was about maybe four or five. I don't think I was quite in kindergarten yet. But I was designated that time to ride up with grandmother, and then everybody else would come up in cars with the, the, her stuff for the summer. So I remember riding up, and loving it, you know, looking out the window, seeing everything. But when we got to the Saluda train, they have to blow that whistle. And, I, and this was unfortunate. I, I wasn't 
not only for the steam engines, these were diesel. They were very loud diesel engines. And that scared the life out of me. <laughs> and I remember crying right on the thing, getting off the train and just bawling, bawling, bawling. And the first thing uh, my mother did was take me over to Wars. And little Ms. Ward was there sitting on the stool as she was always, when I was a little boy sitting on the stool, she soothed me, hugged me, soothed me, said, David, here, and gave me a, a Tootsie Roll pop. <laughs> and I remember that still today. And that, the, the Wards, our family has been so close. I remember Jack and Charlie very well. My grandmother always had groceries hauled up. Yeah. Our house is up on Florida Street. It's the pink house. It's always been some weird color. And that's because of this Latin influence that my, my family had. It's a pink color now. It's been yellow. It's been green. It's been various different colors, but it's pink right now. And um, they would bring the groceries up, and I remember that. But I remember hearing the train coming, me and my sisters, we'd hear that train. As soon as that train came, we'd come tearing down the hill. Almost always one of us would skin our knees as we ran past Ms. Wood's house. And, of course, she still lived, when I was a little boy, she still lived in that old Ms. Wood's house up there on uh, Church Street. And uh, we'd come run down. She would help us if we got scratched or anything. Come run down to put coins on the train to get them flattened as that train <laughs> came through. And uh, so that's really my memories of trains. It's Luda.